when one is with like-minded people, it's not unusual to say, I really felt at home. Home is a place where you feel comfortable, valued and respected. Home is a place to be you, to share one's life, its joys and its pain with the people you choose to live with and who understand and care about you. Home is not just found in the house in which I live though and the people with whom I live, but also in the community in which I've chosen to live. A sense of belonging can be found where home is in a community where you find connection to people and places and are able to participate and contribute to that community. When our sons were born, we had dreams for them, like everyone else. As they grew, of course they had their own dreams. Are they entitled to dream the same dreams as everyone else and to have some of those dreams come true? They are certainly both entitled to a life in which their fundamental needs are met. Their daily lives have meaning and they experience a sense of belonging. I don't believe Warren has ever stopped dreaming. In fact, I think he could always see through the barriers. I want to explain to you the difference in the lives of Matthew and Warren five years ago and also why we did a turnabout with Warren and we believe claimed his life back. The roles that Matthew had at this stage are all roles that were valued by others. He was an accountant, he was a singer-composer, he produced a CD, he was a church leader, he was building a home, he was looking for a wife and he had many opportunities through his roles, relationships and friendships. Warren, on the other hand, his work, he had no understanding of the possibilities outside a day service. He was living a family-governed group home. He socialised 90% of his time with people with disabilities and his friendships were mainly with people with disabilities. He has the diagnosis of cerebral palsy. He has a limited capacity to plan and travel without assistance. He suffers from anxiety. So let me share this ongoing journey that has taken Warren from a life lived in segregation controlled by systems and mainly people paid to be in his life to one lived in community. In May 2002, Warren graduated from a live-in 20-week independent development program called Genesis. No targeted funding was available to him and no accommodation options. We decided we'd help him to be as independent as possible um, in our own home. But Warren's anxiety increased and he was sometimes physically ill in the morning. He was not able to articulate what it was that was causing his increased anxiety. But his body was giving us the message. He was lonely. I knew about a family governed group home in the northern suburbs. So I rang a parent who I knew and she said there was a pace available. The downside was that he was going to miss being away from the community and the social networks in which he grew up. And of course we tried to keep some of these connections going. It wasn't perfect but what other options were there? We made the decision for Warren to take up what we believed was a good opportunity. He was used to complying and we were used to making decisions for him. Did we consider his fundamental needs? Of course we did. Our expectations were high for him to be the best he could be. With the support he needed, cared for at the same standard we provided and with some dignity. But we only knew about systems service providers, client support. We didn't want a government community residential unit. We needed to do something and made an assessment that we thought was in his best interests, a family governed group home. 95% of his time was spent in segregated settings or group situations. He didn't have a typical or ordinary life like you and me. The group home was set up by families because they wanted a high degree of influence over what was happening. So we took our son out of this group home that was family governed and not governed by the system. We did it mainly because our son was not happy. And although he always tried to make the best of each situation in life, he was telling us this is not what he wanted for his life by his demeanour, anxiety and actions. Were his fundamental needs being met? Despite good intentions of those in control, no, they were not being met. The dream of assisting our son to have an ordinary life, how was I going to achieve it? The manager of Warren's day service was there and I was chatting to her and said, I really would like Warren to do some more work. She said, why does he have to work? 
If there's any here that might say that sort of thing, I urge you to be careful what you say because it actually can snuff out the light. And it did for me for a little while, although I did attend further conferences and uh, seminars. And my final encouragement and impetus, I suppose, to move forward came after attending the Mamre Conference in 2005. I linked to the family governed project in Melbourne called Living Distinctive Lives, which grew from the initiative of parents who believe their sons and daughters have a right to a meaningful lifestyle, typical of other members of the community, which includes accommodation arrangements of their choice rather than live in disability settings. LDL takes a whole of life approach for individuals to set up their own home. It is people or families coming together who share common values which provides us with support, inspiration, ideas and motivation. Each individual family in LDL will develop a home and life that suits their son or daughter at the pace that suits the person and their family. There is much less likelihood of loneliness, we believe, if prior or simultaneous building of connection to community happens as an essential part of establishing a home. In July 2005, we had a conversation with Warren about where he wanted to live giving him three options and he chose to come to the flat below the family home and the community in which he lived. This meant a time when we had no funding. Whilst we needed to be creative, he did have freedom to choose. We developed a vision for Warren to have an ordinary life, for him to be able to participate in activities that are meaningful to him, that he's passionate about and to have assistance to develop many different friendships and relationships and we wanted to have people who care about Warren in his life and we do believe that it's people and the community, as we've talked about, that will keep him safe. We're aware of the threats to the vision so we know that we need to go back to it when we're planning or reviewing. I met Anita and Warren through a program that I was working for. In conversation with Anita, I discovered her passion towards working towards a truly meaningful life for her son. In my life I've often thought about how much better life could be for some of the people I've met if only they had the right support. I found myself questioning the idea that people um, with disabilities should be grouped together in all aspects of their lives and the opportunity to try something new to help a friend was just what we needed to move from questioning and complaining to something more proactive. This opportunity to become Warren's housemate just seemed like the right thing to do for us at that point in our lives and we knew it would be more challenging than living on our own, but John and I, my husband, both feel like living in real community is so enriching and living with Woz has proven to be just that. Warren sometimes needs prompts for daily living and it varies on how much we need to prompt him depending on how he's feeling. But since day one, John and I have been refining our role in his life. Over time, we've gradually worked out a routine that seems to work well. So Ashley and John are the pivotal link to other supporters, both the natural and the paid, and they do provide invaluable insight to help in understanding situations and needs. We do communicate with other people in Warren's life to make sure that we're all on the same page. One example is when Warren's support workers comes to pick him up in the morning, we're able to let her know if there's anything, any anxiety or concerns for Warren so that she can be sensitive towards him during the day and the communication is just much better. We're also part of Warren's circle of support which exists to create and support the kind of life that he wants. It's very important for us to be part of this as we're the ones who see Warren from day to day and we see him at home and how he's really feeling because home is where he lets himself be vulnerable and where he works through his anxiety. Molly was born on the 29th of December last year and since becoming pregnant and having a baby my practical involvement in um, hands-on support from day to day has kind of decreased a bit but the addition of Molly to our household has been both a challenge and a great joy. Um, she adores Warren and he loves her and enjoys being involved in her life. And he also commented recently that he'd love to be a father one day too. A definite benefit is that I know Warren a whole lot better. John and I were talking recently about how differently we used to see Warren. John had only seen was in passing at church before and he viewed him as the quiet type who didn't really want to connect with people and wanted to keep to himself. I knew him from the program I was working for where he was the loudest person there and you couldn't shut him up and he was just so interactive. The was we now know sits somewhere between those two extremes. Um, he's friendly and hilariously funny. He's caring and sensitive as a housemate and he's very tuned into how we're feeling. If we didn't have this experience of being his housemates, we would still have that unreal view of Warren and who he is as a person. He is so complex and genuine 
and um, we would be missing out if we didn't know him properly. A definite benefit for us is gaining Warren as a friend and another loving person in Molly's life. We also benefit when we see things work. When we see Woz improve on something, make a new friend. There are always struggles and challenges, particularly around helping Warren to communicate his feelings and furthering meaningful relationships. There have been times, particularly recently, where he's objected to his housemate prompts and has become angry with John. He's told Ashley he doesn't want John telling him what to do. When I offered recently to help him sort something out to go downstairs and talk with Ash and John, he said to me, no, you'll embarrass me, I can handle it. <laughs> These kinds of situations indicate to us that he's becoming his own person, claiming his space and wanting a normal life. He communicates his feelings to us more and more every day and it's been something that has been quite challenging and the gradual opening up isn't through anything that we've done um, to make it happen but it's through the natural process of becoming closer and feeling safe um, with people you trust. Does it work? <laughs> well having housemates does work for Warren because it's based on his needs and desires. It works because when you're travelling along a road with somebody there's no such thing as failure. It's all a case of trial and error. It works because we're constantly evaluating what we're doing and we rework things that aren't going as they should. It does work because we have an open and honest relationship, as we said with Anita and Alan, where we expect change. We haven't felt pressured to be something we couldn't be. It's been clear that our role has been to be housemates and provide some natural support for Warren. And perhaps more importantly, the added benefit of Warren's development in embracing the life he wants and how he wants to live it and having say so over the kind of person he wants to share his home with. We've been blessed to have had Ashley and John and Molly come into our lives. They always look on situations from Warren's point of view and from the perspective of the things he may be struggling with at the time. Warren does have a circle of support. Uh, our circle objective is to create the best possible community lifestyle with Warren. We want people to know and understand Warren before we get too old before a crisis occurs, but people who will continue to support him and to help him to live out the vision for his life. His life is full of meaningful days now and valued roles that we've all been talking about. He has his own support person who goes out with him three times a week. She's em employed by us. We goes down to the Salvo's coffee shop and volunteers there. St Vincent's Hospital Executive Department, he goes in there and he'll do some uh, shredding or he may do some deliveries as well. He's also an artist. He's had an art exhibition. He was very proud. He sold at least four of his paintings at that art exhibition. For six months, Every Friday he went to the local police station and did their shredding and the staff were grading their approach. That doesn't mean that everybody in the police station thought he should be there. But they did. there was one man who was the senior sergeant who was wonderful with him, very much respected him. Warren was there without a support person and he made his own way. Further research for Warren to be involved in the police continued and we persevered as this is his area of passion. He challenged us constantly by reminding us that's where he wanted to be. So we tried something radical. I wrote to the Commissioner of Police in Victoria and suggested that because Queensland and the ACT have a volunteering in policing, why not Victoria? Her office was most responsive and as a result, Warren's commenced as a member of the volunteer team at the police museum and shop in the World Trade Centre. So he's now also a member of a team. So he'll be involved in training opportunities with them. They'll have extracurricular activities and perhaps have a Christmas party. So there's many opportunities that are going to come up for socialising. Upon arriving though home after the interview with the manager there, he said, oh, that was a good experience. <laughs> Just... <laughs> so his dream to work at the World Trade Centre has become a reality. He's got work, he's got valued roles, he's got safeguards in his life, he's got places to do his music, he's got art exhibitions. Warren has a vision and often dreams and we, his family and friends, must keep our eyes on that vision because there we can so easily find ourselves compromising it. I believe the safeguards to that vision should be kept by the family. We can be supported by an agency and their staff but we must not rely on them to protect Warren from change. For Warren and us, his family, to have this high degree of say-so returned is indeed empowering.